friends, today I'm going to be talking to you about some of the things I love in books. I've seen this video going around on booktube, I think Books and Lala is where I saw it first, but I've definitely seen it on more places, I think Linking My Right Shelf has done it too. And essentially this is a video where you talk about some of the things that you love to see in books that aren't exactly genres, they're not exactly tropes, they're just little things that you enjoy in books that when you hear that a book has that thing in you go oh definitely I am interested in that book and you add it straight to your TBR. So I'm going to talk to you through these sort of vague weird things that I like in books and you can leave some uh, recommendations for me based on this in the comments I would love to get some more recommendations that have these things in them and I'm going to give you some examples of either books that I've read or books that I'm really intrigued by that have these things in them. So without further ado let's get to the things. The first one will come as absolutely no surprise um, to you because I talk about it all the time and that is historical fiction where the language in which the book is written makes me feel like it is of that time period. It's a delicate balance because you don't want to be writing in Middle English when you're writing a medieval historical fiction or anything too close to a classic that can seem almost like a parody. But at the same time, I don't want the language to sound super modern. Because even if you've got all of the period details of what's going on and of the jobs people are doing or the way people are dressing, you're describing that in a very historically accurate way. When the description is done with language that feels really modern or even just formations or syntax that sounds really modern, I feel pulled out of the story. So my examples of this are, as you may not be surprised, the Wolf Hall trilogy by Hilary Mantel which I think does this absolutely perfectly you feel like you are in a Tudor man's head and when you pop out of the story you suddenly are surprised not to be surrounded by wood panelling and candlelight despite the fact that it doesn't actually sound like a Shakespeare play and Golden Hill by Francis Spofford which felt like it could have been written in 1737 which I think is when it's set rather than in 2018 um, it really helps to build the atmosphere of the story um, and so I definitely love that. The next one is something similar in terms of the fact it is about the way that it is written rather than events or characters and that is books with a dreamlike atmosphere. I love books that feel um, kind of unmoored from reality and that feel a bit like anything could happen. It's kind of books with small amounts of magic that isn't properly explained. It's not like high fantasy where everything's laid out for you. It's just a sort of feeling like you're floating or you're in a dream. Everything feels kind of not concrete and I love that. That, For example, The Grace Keepers by Kirsty Logan has that definitely and in addition to that has a sort of floaty sea-like thing which is one thing that I don't have on my list but I love books that involve the sea. And um, The Night Circus is another one that's really in that same vein although I feel like the magic there is a bit more concrete um, it still has that sort of dreamy experience. Um, another thing I love is when books play with form when books intersperse poetry or found objects when you have whole pages with just a few words on or blacked out text I just really really enjoy when the form of the book can help to tell the story so things like the Shadow King by Marzo Mengiste in which there are little vignettes that are descriptions of photographs because one of the main characters is a photographer and then there are also vignettes that are told from a chorus of women like the Greek chorus um, which gives it a sort of sense of epicness and history which I really enjoyed um, or Lincoln in the Bardo which is one of the weirdest books I've ever read but I absolutely loved it. It's about a boy who's died and it's split between real life and just to death and the bits that are life are told from these historical sources laid out and some of them aren't real historical sources but some of them are and I just loved the way that that was used to tell the story. And then also Jonathan Safran Foer who I think is kind of a master of this and my favourite of his books is Everything is Illuminated. I also love books with a massive rich cast of characters especially with like funny quirky characters inserted for comedy. I love it when books can really clearly differentiate between the voices of different characters and you can feel like you're getting to know an entire world. I think that's what I love about it is that it builds up and fleshes out this world by filling it in with lots of people and lots of different people who you can imagine have their own interiority rather than just being 2D people with your main characters standing in front of them. Books that did this for me was The Luminaries by Eleanor Caton, which has so many characters and they all feel very real and have their own backgrounds. And also David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. I think David Copperfield and A Christmas Carol are the only Dickens that I've read, but I think he is kind of a master of this. I also love historical fiction that has the drip of fantasy in it, which is kind of what I was talking about with the dreamlike thing. Um, but 
this is more specifically historical fiction with either actual fantasy or the possibility of fantasy. I love it when you're not entirely sure if things are real or they are supernatural. Um, so for this I was thinking of The Mermaid and Mrs Hancock and also The Essex Serpent where there is a hint there could be something more. Also when there is like religion in a book but it's not but it's not a religious book it's just talking about religion and science and belief and humanity and human and kind of like the philosophy of science um, and the philosophy of belief and religion. I love those themes being explored. And then another one which I think is probably incredibly popular for a lot of women, <laughs> uh, especially women who love to read, and that is female characters who love to rail against their trapped existence, especially in catics or in historical fiction set in time periods where women had even less freedom than they do now. Um, so things like Jo March in Little Women or uh, Lizzie Bennet in Pride and Prejudice or Margaret Hale in North and South. I love those books because they feel like women I can relate to um, but I also just feel really close to those women. I love their passion and I love women being angry or women being um, loud, women being big personalities. Um, I love that, especially even when they are sort of quiet and demure but also passionate about the things they're passionate about, like Margaret Hale who has a strong sense of social justice beside, beside her strong sense of duty and traditional Christianity. Um, so, But it's not just in classics, also in things like The Girl with the Louding Voice, a Dooney in here is a woman in, or a girl, um, in a very serious, in a very trapped existence where she is being sold twice and um she doesn't have her independence but it's what she wants and she wants it not just for herself but for other girls who are like her and i found her to be one of the most endearing char endearing characters i've ever read in contemporary fiction so um it's definitely something that draws me into a character and makes me love them. I don't always have to like characters to like a book. I do also love it when an author can make you feel for a character that is morally grey or doing things you yourself don't agree with, but they manage to manipulate manipulate you. But if I'm going to love a character, it's usually a woman who wants something that society is telling her she can't have. One that is a bit more clear cut is witchcraft or people being persecuted for powers that they have, but not in a high fantasy way, just in a um, historical way or if done in a modern way, um, but with reference to historical witch trials and witches um, is something that I'm definitely interested in, especially when the magic is closer to nature and natural magic rather than like Harry Potter kind of magic. Um, I, if I see witches and witchcraft in a uh, in a blurb I'll definitely be intrigued even if it's in a genre I don't really read like YA fantasy if it's about witches I kind of consider it um, so that's things like the bear and the nightingale uh, where one of the characters sees spirits sees spirits and can commune with them and is persecuted by the Christians in it um, also the Mercies and Circe neither of which I have read but I know they are both about witches and witchcraft um, and people being accused of witchcraft and I'm intrigued by that and also the illness lesson by Claire Beams which isn't quite witches it is uh, women learning things but also mysterious uh, birds and the birds are created are connected to their illness and um, feels just kind of witchy to me <laughs> even though it's not really about witches but it is set in Massachusetts near the Salem witch trials and the um, and um, the epigraph says divination seems heightened and raised to its highest power in women which um, makes me really intrigued because uh, that's kind of a powers women having powers <laughs> um, Another one that, that I like, but I could only think of one example of, and I know I like it, but um, I, that means I just need to read more, and that is things set in a remote, harsh place. Um, I love things that are set in a remote, harsh environment, especially if it's near the sea or if it's snowing. Um, anything that is like pushing humans to their limits through weather or pathetic fallacy, then I absolutely love it. And the only example I could think of was Wuthering Heights and the wild moors being reflected in Heathcliff and Gary Cathy's characters. Um, but I know that that is something I'm intrigued by. Remoteness, isolation, um, people living on the edge of humanity. Um, I've read a few books like that. I read The Glass Woman, I think that's what it was called, um, which was set in Iceland. And though I didn't love that book, it did make me want to read more books set in Iceland because that is exactly the kind of remote wilderness, which is both by the sea and snowy. So it seems like the perfect country for me to be reading fiction about. Um, another one, which is kind of probably obvious from all of the things that I've been saying I love, but that is books that include folklore and fairy tales. Um, so books that are either based on folklore or fairy tales or have a touch of the magic in them. 
So that is things like the Bear and the Nightingale, which I already mentioned, which has is based on Russian folklore. No, the Grace Keepers, which I already mentioned, but also the Gloaming, which is by Kirsty Logan again, and I think is about mermaids. Um, and then also Island Child by Molly Aitken, which is based on Irish folklore and set on a remote island. So that's what drew me to that. And then the final one that I love to read and have definitely been enjoying more recently is historical fiction that is not from a UK US perspective or just a Western perspective. Although actually I am enjoying historical fiction set in Australia at the moment. And I think historical fiction in Canada would also be of interest to me. So it's just UK US if it's outside of that, because I feel like most of the historical fiction I have read thus far has been from the UK or the US. And while I'm, I do enjoy those books, I am definitely being drawn more towards learning about historical periods outside of those two countries. Um, so for example, this year I enjoyed The Shadow King, which I already mentioned, um, and also How We Disappeared by Jing Jing Li, which was set in Singapore. Um, Half of a Yellow Sun by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, which is set in Nigeria. When I did my list of 12 historical fiction books that I would like to read, which I will leave in the cards, um, I think I mentioned uh, She Would Be King, and I think uh, The Enlightenment of the Green Gauge Tree, a lot of those historical fictions were not set in the UK or the US, and that was one of the things that really drew me to it. I love books which are set in a setting that differs from my the setting that I know, which I think is why I love light fantasy, but also books from around the world. <laughs> So that is all of the things that I could think of that I love in books. If you can think of any books that include one or maybe even two or three of these things, I would love to hear in the comments below. And please let me know what are some things that you like in books that aren't exactly genres or tropes, but are just something that if you read on a blurb, it makes you go, oh yeah, I'm definitely interested in reading that book. Thank you for watching. Please like this video if you liked it. And remember to subscribe because I put out new videos every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.